Hi guys, welcome back to the Spurred On podcast. It's Monday after Friday's excellent 2-0 win at the City Ground against Nottingham Forest. And this is an episode of five things we learnt from that game. Firstly, before we get into it, thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate the numbers of you that are watching and listening and commenting. Please keep that going. I will continue to try and reply to all of your comments where I can. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, thank you so much. I would love it if you could come over and subscribe on YouTube as well to watch me in vision. I'm at youtube.com forward slash at Barnaby Slater underscore and vice versa. If you're watching on YouTube, please do give me a subscribe or a follow on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That's really helpful to me and my ability to keep making this content for you every day. Anyway, let's get back to the city ground. What a performance. I know a lot of people are talking about the fact that it wasn't the most beautiful game to watch, but I will say that is not down to us. It's not down to Big Ange Postacoglu, and this is something that will happen to us a lot this season, especially in away games, but also when clubs try to come and shut up shop against us at White Hart Lane. It's not going to be easy to break down these sides and they're going to set up in exactly the same way that West Ham did and got three points against us. 11 men behind the ball, three at the back, keeping it narrow within the width of their own 18-yard boxes and trying to make us play through and get it out wide and get crosses in because they've known, especially previously to the Forest game actually, when we've had uh, Sonny up top rather than Richarlison as he's been in the last couple of games, they know that we're not going to score goals a lot from crosses. However, in this game, with Richarlison up front and at that moment when Deki Kulisewski went out to the right after Brennan Johnson's injury, we did get a good cross in and we did get a goal through Richarlison. I'll talk more about him in a minute. But as I said, the key part to why the game wasn't very beautiful and lovely to watch is that was the game that Forrest wanted us to play. They managed to keep us out for the first 15 minutes. Then their crowd got into it and then they were able to kind of keep it tight and make it very difficult and also make it an extremely physical game. Nottingham Forest were incredibly physical against us. They should have had many more bookings than they did. I think the referee was a little bit more amenable to uh, Forest tackles than he was to Spurs' tackles, maybe because the, the home crowd were really up for it. It was a Friday night, Christmas time. They'd probably been in the pub all day, and so the atmosphere was rocking at times. But all of those things mean what an excellent excellent three points that was to get in terms of the five things i want to talk about i want to start with deki kulisevsky given the man of the match a lot of plaudits after the game and rightly so i want to talk initially especially about his first kind of 20 minutes before brennan johnson got injured though in that kind of number eight number 10 pocket where james madison plays i love watching deki kulisevsky in that position i think he is born to play in that position he's not blessed with pace so he can be a little kind of easy to defend against when he's playing on the right he's still great on the right kind of seven out of ten but I think he kind of gets into that eight nine out of ten when he's in the pockets and he was taking up some wonderful positions in that first 15 20 minutes in fact I was totally gutted when Brennan Johnson went off and he had to go out and play uh, Kulisevsky had to go out and play on the right because I felt we really lost something from there. He was so difficult to pick up, really ghosting in between the lines. And with Romero back playing for us, he's able to find those passes into him just like he was able to find those between the lines passes into James Madison back when he was fit. So it'll be really interesting to see, I think, with the Everton match coming up and with the kind of suspensions and injuries that we still have in that game. I think Ange will be trying to find a way to get Kulisevsky playing in that number 10 pocket. I think Johnson should be fit because it's not a concussion. It was just a a badly cut head. And I think he'll want Kulisevsky to play in that 10 because against Everton, when they will be incredibly tight against us and will be looking to score goals mainly from set pieces, I think we will need that creativity. Also, of course, interesting to see whether Giolo Celso will be fit again for that game. Because once again, disappointingly, he hasn't been able to string together a run of games. He's been in good form when he's played, but he always gets these niggling injuries. And if there's only one reason I would give for why maybe if we get a good offer for him in January or next summer, it would be because of his inability to string games together. There's always been a good player in Giovanni Lo Celso. Always. He's just played for the wrong managers at Spurs in Mourinho and then Nuno and then Conte. But under Ange, he could absolutely be a a terrific player, especially in terms of a squad player for us. But if he's never able to put 10 games together without getting injured, 
it's very difficult to see him having a future at this club. So whether or not he's going to be fit for this run of Christmas games, I think will be vital for Spurs because, again, picking up these injuries and suspensions. After the game, going back to Kulisevsky, Gary Neville said he could become a £100 million player. We got him for €30 million. I'm not saying I disagree with Gary Neville, but what I'm saying is what sport is he looking at when he looks at a player like Moise Caicedo or Enzo Fernandez going for £110 million and then just saying that Deki Kulisevsky could be a £100 million player. We're talking about a guy who is an extreme goal contributor. Scores goals, assists goals. You can't knock him off the ball. I'm saying that Gary Neville should have gone further. He could be worth way more than £100 million. He's only 23 years old. He's got such a high ceiling, Deki Kulisevsky, and I love having him at the club. Weirdly, over the last 18 months, there have been times where some of the, the corner of the Tottenham fan base have, have called Deki Kulisevsky out for being one-dimensional. Yes, he's easier to defend against out on the right, but does he ever not put a full shift in? He's got the highest sprint and running stats, I believe, in the Premier League at the moment. No one has run further than him. What more do you want from a player? Yes, of course, if he had an extra yard of pace, he'd be absolutely elite. But as uh, uh, someone I was presenting, Marlon from um, Southview Coy said when I was presenting on We Are Tottenham TV the other day, if, if Deggy had another yard of pace, maybe he would never have come to Tottenham Hotspur. So we've got to take the reality of, of all of his talents and his attributes and just say how lucky we are to have him. Keep him fit. Keep him on the pitch. I think Ange will find a place for him wherever he can as the other players become fit around him. I'm talking about your Madisons and your Los Celsos and your Benton Coors. We should always find a place for him, but I do love him around in that little 10 spot. And also, his shot with his right foot. As he said after the game, he should shoot more with his right foot. And now that he started doing it, he scored two goals with his right foot now this season. Sheffield United last second winner at home. And now this winner, the second goal against Forrest. If he keeps taking it on his right foot and put his laces through the ball, he will be harder to defend against because defenders won't know which way to go. Okay, moving on. I have to talk about Eve Basuma. I feel like he's getting a bit of unnecessary stick here. Listen, this kind of tackle happens, especially in the modern day, and red cards are given more and more for this. But all he's trying to do is chase the game because he took a bad touch. He took a bad touch because he's being asked to take the ball on the half turn in front of his own 18-yard box. If he clears it down the line with his left foot first time, we lose the ball. And that's kind of Conte ball. That's Jose Mourinho ball. He's doing what he's been told to do. Took a bad touch and he's chasing it. And I have to say, if he doesn't chase it and he doesn't foul him, they're about four on two against us and maybe they score. So I'm not saying it was a good tackle. It wasn't a good tackle. I think it was a red card. And I also don't agree in the kind of Twitter conspiracy theorists that everybody's against Spurs. I don't think that's true uh, in terms of referees. It was a red card, but he's trying to do the right thing. So let's not have a go at him. Uh, look, he dived for and got a second yellow against Luton. That was a red card. I'm not going to kill him for that either. It wasn't ideal, but he's still kind of young, only 25, 26 maybe. I'm not saying like he's a youth player. You know, he's more experienced and he should know better, but he's still young and he's trying to do it right. He panicked a little bit. Let's stay off his back. He's a top player and I think he will be great for the future of our football club. Moving on, Richarlison. Love that he's got a bit more self-belief now since his injury. That was a brilliant leap for that header. No one's talked about it, but he actually gets up really early. He knows the ball's coming in. He doesn't know whether it's going to hit the first defender or not, but he gets up and he gets there really early. And otherwise, if he doesn't get up that early, maybe it's a little bit above him or behind him and he heads it over. Very good header. Class. And we're going to need Richarlison this January. Sonny's away for the Asian Cup. This is a chance for for Richarlison to be the main man at this club. No Kane, no Sonny. He'll be the player that everyone's looking for. He needs to take advantage. Stay fit. Get a run of games together where he's scoring goals. He started now three in two games. This could be the period of time where he really gets his confidence up as a Spurs player. It could be very exciting. Not just into January, in these games before January as well. If he keeps this run of games, goals and games going, it could be a very exciting season for Richarlison. Could he get to that 15 goal mark that I think we'll need? Because Sonny is also already kind of at 10 or 11 goals. He's going to get to 20 goals. If they can get, you know, 35 goals between them, that'll be amazing. I want to move on. Ben Davis showing how important it is that we do not just sell players because the corner of the Spurs fan base think they're not good enough he is an excellent squad player an incredibly intelligent footballer and he's playing so well positionally 
as the left centre half. His positional play is excellent. He's not the biggest in the air, but he wins a lot of headers. He's not the quickest, but he gets in the right positions. Sure, there are going to be difficult moments because we play such a high line, but I'm so impressed with Ben Davis, and that's why we kept with him, and that's why it just shows that even though you might not be a a superstar, a 10 out of 10 player every week, we need players like Ben Davis. Absolutely class. My final thing of the five things that I feel like we've learned, or I've learned, just want to give another big up to Vicario. Venom Vicario. What a keeper. What a presence. I loved Hugo Lloris, but he was never imposing from crosses. He was never imposing as a shot stopper. He made unbelievably agile, instinctive saves. But this keeper is a cut above at the moment. And it just shows Ange has made the right decision, bringing him in. People are saying he's better than David, David Raya and it's lucky we didn't get David Raya. I'd say David Raya is also an absolutely elite keeper, but not able to show it at the moment because of the weird pressure at that club down the road, at Woolwich, because they've got two good keepers there. Vicario, safer bet, less money, and he is being talked about in many articles I'm reading as the best goalkeeper in the league at the moment, and I wouldn't go far from disagreeing to that. Uh, guys, the only final thing I wanted to mention is it showed in that last that last 10 minutes of the game, Ange made his first kind of defensive, properly defensive substitutions of the season, brought Emerson Royal to play as a kind of th- third centre-half there, and it shows when he needs to win the game, when they're 2-0 up and they need to not concede, he's willing to do it. And that is good stuff because I felt we could have maybe done that against Wolves when we ended up losing that game. Maybe that's just a little learning there, but still... not I'm not saying that Ange is getting away from his attacking beliefs, but just I think I saw a little tweak there. Guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. Once again, if you're not following on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast, please do give me a follow or subscribe there. It's so helpful. And vice versa, if you're listening and you want to watch me on YouTube, it's at youtube.com forward slash at Barnaby Slater underscore. Thank you so much for your support. Another three points. Everton at the weekend. Huge game. Come on, you Spurs.